Effective Twilight is live now? Really? Let's see if it's live. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Hello, I think we're everyone. Live. Welcome. Yep, yep, yep. I hope you all can see me and hear me all right. <sighs> I can. Perfect. Lovely. Well, then I say welcome to this webinar uh, hosted by Ticket and 356 Labs. Uh, my name is Julieta. I work as a customer success manager here at Ticket, and I'm going to be your host today, which means that I'm going to be available uh, in the chat. Uh, I'm going to answer all your questions there and also lift your questions at the end of this webinar when we're going to have a Q&A session with today's speaker. Uh, I have to say that this webinar is being recorded and you're going to get a recording of the webinar after it's over. Uh, with that, I'm going to let you know what we're going to speak about today. And it's one problem that unites both Picket and 356 Labs <laughs> in that we're trying to solve the same problem in our own unique ways. That's the problem of bad presentations. And today we're going to be very, very experienced uh in doing good presentations how to pull this off ourselves uh so with that i say welcome to boris Christoph, uh ceo and founder of 356 labs hi welcome hi thank you for having me once again super nice having you today and i'm very very excited about this uh do you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and what you guys do at 356 labs sure absolutely thank you again for having me thanks uh, welcome everyone who joined this webinar we'll have quite a lot of fun in the next 30 40 minutes uh, my name is boris <laughs> i run the presentation agency with a very interesting name 356 labs many people will consider it 365 labs for many reasons as you can imagine we are 356 labs we are only presentation agency the only thing we do are presentations and we help our clients deliver, prepare and deliver truly effective presentations. Uh, we do that by helping them building, build the presentations. We then coach them how to deliver them. We have quite a lot of like really rich portfolio of presentation trainings. We also have consulting services, building templates. We, from, we recently announced a podcast. So just to give you context, and then I'm stopping here because I don't want to spam you. You are not here for this. We work with clients like KPMG, Microsoft, Adidas, Nestle, uh, Roche, many, many uh, organizations. And yeah, some of the com some of the presentations that we did were quite, quite successful. Let's go this way because it helped clients like Deutsche Telekom win multi-million dollar deals. Uh, we pitched Lufthansa successfully. One of our clients uh, won money from Lufthansa, another from uh, Bill Clinton. And we also did an IPO, which uh, raised more than 50 million euro. So, yeah, that's kind of it. Oh, my God, that sounds super exciting. And for those of you that are not familiar with Ticket, I also don't want to spam you with this because that's not what you're here for. But I'm just going to give you a one minute run through. Uh, Ticket is an office add-in and it's basically what you can see on the right side of yep. the screen. Uh, it's, uh, we're super proud uh, to currently be the most downloaded ad in, in the entire Office Store. Uh, we are an Office App Awards winner for four years in a row. Um, and our ad-in is available to download and try uh, from the Office Store and App Source. So when you do that, you will get access to the Picket Images Library. So I'm just going to yeah. ask you, Boris, to click on the just did that. so we can very yeah. quickly show that. Right. So as you can see here, uh, the library features image collections. Those are curated by our staff, where all the images are handpicked for making impact with PowerPoint, but they're also completely legal to use for any other purpose outside of PowerPoint as well. Uh, you can browse a collection, or if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can make a search uh, in order to find the image you're looking for. Now, uh, you might notice that Boris also has a company images tab on his screen. So that is a feature we have avail available with our business subscription. And this is where you can upload your company's own images. Uh, for example, your logos or photos you've taken yourself or photos that you've acquired elsewhere and put them right inside PowerPoint and Word for your colleagues to be able to search through and use. Uh, the Picket Library is included in the Picket subscription as well. 
So you also get access to unlimited amount of royalty free use for any purpose and as a business subscriber you have uh, the control to let everybody um, access uh, the entire picket library or uh, limit that to administrators so that you as an administrator can decide exactly which images your colleagues are able to see and not and with the business subscription you also get some added control like branding the adding by adding your company logo and accent color like I see that 356 labs have done uh, otherwise, the default color of our add-in is our PP pink. And for today's uh, webinar, we have curated a collection of images from the Picket library, and we have placed it inside 356 Labs company library. Uh, we've also featured that collection, so that it's easy to access. It's the one right on the top. So with that said, now it's time to talk presentations. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Boris, so you can show us how to transform a bad presentation into a good presentation. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's start. And everyone who is here on the webinar, please get ready to type in some comments. So the first and initial thing that I want you guys to understand is that I'm not the I'm not a designer. Everything that you are about to see in this webinar was created by me and not by our design team. That is very important. We, with you here, are not designers. So the question is, can a not designer, can a non-designer create beautiful slides? So that will be something that we are going to explore. However, I want to start from where the initial phase, like where are we starting from? And I tried, guys, I really tried to build something that's ugly, okay? <laughs> so this is my best try. <laughs> this is my best option to build something that looks really ugly. I'm sure that you have seen worst image worst presentations like this but stay with me on this one so i will just give you a quick glimpse of how this bad presentation looks like and then i'll ask you guys to just put in in the comments what do you not like what you do you think is completely wrong in this presentation so that i get a sense of what is going on in this webinar and how do we kind of think with you in regards to slide design so this is the first slide, incredible slide, as you can see, four by three, a lot of shadows, a lot of text, some of the text you cannot see, but who cares, right? Then I have an agenda slide. Please, once you are looking at those slides, please type in things that you don't like in the chat. I will be quite curious to see your comments. I will stay yeah. on this one because I want to see whether or not someone will notice elements. I'm looking as well. I see okay. comments like 90s vibes. And, okay. so, uh, I'm I'm surprised how he made the ugly slides by making cool slide design. It gets harder to make ugly slides. <laughs> That's completely, I completely agree. So this one is, of course, you have to have an agenda slide, you know, like it's really critical. That's why I decided to have an agenda slide. I want to have golden bullet points. So if you have bullet points, at least let them be gold. And I also have a very cool image. A cool, uh, we'll see whether or not it's cool. Then we have another slide with clip art. We have quite some text. We have a bullet point, not two, but one. And of course, it's gold. Then we have some really fancy uh, titles in regards to color. I hope you like it. Uh, then more bullet points with some photos. Then uh, more bullet points with some photos. What's more, presentation design helps you in the following other ways. Keeps the audience engaged by uh -huh. understanding overall better results. Then. We have some 3D charts, which is kind of cool. I really like that. Uh, this is again my best try. So don't uh, don't don't judge me. I know that it could be worse, <laughs> but let me know in the chat and let uh, let us know in the chat what do you dislike here? What is wrong here? So okay, this is the we have a comment by Christian saying fonts, transitions, aspect ratio, colors. Tables, Colors. diagrams. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of crazy stuff. Uh, however, all right, however, we have. I do, I just sorry. I just want to let you know that uh, we have uh, an issue seeing you in presentation mode, so we're only seeing the presentation. I'm not in presentation uh, mode. That's why you're not seeing it. I don't. Uh, I don't okay. want to even go in presentation mode because if I go there, it will become crazy. So this, I believe, right. should be more than enough for us to start. So. Right, I, and uh, some users said that uh, the view is not progressing from the first slide. So if you can just click, very quickly click through the slides once again. Okay, so, so this is the first slide. Right now I'm on the first slide. 
again, slide number two. Agenda slide number three here. What is presentation design? Slide number four, which says 1.1, which industries could presentation design be applied? Uh, what's more, fifth number is five, what's presentations? Uh, what's more, presentation design helps in the following other ways. 3D bar charts, obviously. Then we have some smart art. Is it okay for um, still not moving? Gabriel, I believe you have to, guys. I don't know why it's not moving. I think you have to refresh. Is everyone else seeing it? Uh, no, it isn't moving. Um, okay. Could you maybe try and reshare your screen? I will. For sure, uh, give, give me a sec. So let's enable the whole screen. Yeah. Of course. Yes, let's try that. Okay, so what about now, guys? Is that working? Still loading, one second. Waiting. <laughs> yeah, the magics of technology, as usual. Is it working now? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. You have to see this. This is masterpiece. You have. Yeah, I believe so. And it's it's usually the demo ghost and the masters of technology that yeah, but don't let us see the beautiful. It's kind, of, it's kind of strange that some people are seeing it and some people are not, by the way. That's kind yeah, of disturbing. So anyone seeing it? All good? Because I stopped it. Yeah. Are we good? I think so. Okay. So again, quickly going through the slides. Sorry for the guys that seen this masterpiece already three times. Uh, so again, title slide, agenda slide, because, well, you know, we cannot manage it without an agenda slide. Then another slide with one golden bullet point. Then we have some other bullet points. Of course, all of them are gold. Then some more bullet points and a picture. However, as you can see, I keep it consistent. The colors are kind of consistent, right? Then I have 3D bar chart, which is saying something, but what is saying, I personally don't know, but who cares? Then we have, uh, then we have smart art, which is, of course, another object that everyone has to use uh, for no reason, right? Like many people are using smart art, and when you ask them, why are you using smart art? And they're like, why, why shouldn't we? And I'm like, well, that's kind of not the proper answer. Um, then, of course, there is another slide from some other presentation that was copy pasted here because you have seen this and I'm sure you have seen this at least once in the past. 50 slides, they all look consistent and then there is one or two or six slides that are simply copy pasted from another presentation. There is no way those slides are part of the whole, right? And I have done this. And obviously another one which says, thank you and any questions. And obviously, as you can see, uh, the colors of the thank you are really fancy. So these are the bad, the bad things. Uh, this is the bad presentation that we are going to work on. Um, what do people think is ugly in this presentation? Let me know while we... We got some comments okay. here. Um, Martin is saying background, fonts, text effects, bullet points, bad images, colors. Okay. The list is not finishing. <laughs> okay. And then... <laughs> And then Faris is saying, OMD. Yeah. OMD? Uh, is this oh, oh my, OMD? OMD. OMG, okay, okay. Oh, oh my God. God. I thought that oh, it's all oh my design. Christian is saying, clip arts, 95 calling. Classics. Classics. Smart, smart arts look very smart is another comment. So, again, more than enough for now. More than enough for now. Let's jump into a presentation that, again, I created for myself. This is obviously something that is created just for the webinar. Again, created created only uh, created only by me, not by the designers, as you will see, because I don't need designers to build presentations like this. So I'll close this one. Is everything okay? I think so. Yeah. So and I will go to another presentation and I will show you that one in slideshow mode because I want you to see the whole thing. Okay, so this is how the presentation looks. Let me know if you can see it easily. Can you see that? And I'll go in screen show, uh, in slideshow. Julieta, can you see that? Let's see. So looking for looking. someone to comment. Okay. So I was, I uh, 
you disappeared to me on like I, I was not able to hear you but now I can hear you so this is the redesign okay this is the redesign I'll quickly go through the slide so that you guys give a like have an idea of what was changed and then I will show you the tricks that I used in order to make these slides happen okay so let's go quickly through those slides so first slide presentation design should we care then we have number one in the agenda the what the why the how I don't need to be a designer to be able to do that however take a look at what happens next I think that this moving element, this transition will be slower in your case because we are connected over the internet, obviously. But again, in my, on my computer, this is completely smooth. So I get into the first part, presentation design is different than PowerPoint. And then presentation design is applicable globally where money are involved. And then I go back to the agenda slide. From there, I go to the why, it zooms in. I go to this one, I say, and this is the smart art, oh, by the way, engaged audience, improved clarity, better results. And oh, by the way, this 3D chart is now looking like this. 1% of our competition spends time on presentation design source, because on the previous slide, there was no source. Now we have source, very important to have source. However, the source is fake news. Then we go back. And then we have the how. We go into the how. I'll show you all of that. We have start analog first, define your goal and your audience, and then jump into PowerPoint. And then we have let's make better presentations, Boris, Julieta, on and on. Okay, so this is the presentation. Now, in the comments, does that look better? Does that look better? Does that look better, guys? Okay, Kenrick, yes. Of course, <laughs> of mm -hmm. course, much better. Okay, so let me show you the tricks that you can use without being a designer to make a presentation that looks like this. Because based on our experience and we have the privilege to work and to speak all across the world, if you come up with something that looks like this, which is not built by a designer, that, will, that alone will differentiate you immediately. Okay, so now let's see how all of that was built. So let's start from the first slide, right? Let's, let's try to understand the first slide. What was done here? The first thing that you are probably going to notice is that I changed the four by three aspect ratio to 16 by nine. So now the slides are not anymore. So just to give you context, if I go to a blank presentation, this is 16 by nine. If I go to the design tab, and then I go to the slide size on the right hand side, you can see standard, which is four by three. This is the four by three. This is the old format. There, we can discuss after the webinar when you should be using that. Is there a case when you should be using that? But by default, yes, there are cases, of course. But by default, if you are planning a presentation in 2019, please stick to 16 by nine, okay? So this is something that I created already. I did already. So this is 16 by nine. So how did I come up with this slide? Well, let me show you. I'll try, I'll build a new slide. I'll op open pick it because as Julieta told you, all of the photos that we are using here in this presentation are coming from the picket add-in. I'll click on the, the selected photos, the collection, and then I'll choose the photo. This is a photo that I, I found on picket and I believe it's really cool because, because when you are, in this case, we are not bound. We are not bound by corporate identity, right? We are not bound by a PowerPoint template. So consider that. However, when we are not bounded to a corporate identity or by a template, <coughs> sorry for that one, I want you, when you are looking at Picket, when you're searching for imagery, uh, photos and images, especially for the first slide, please, guys, and everyone in this webinar, look for photos that have, first of all, quite a lot of space in the photo free space and also if possible if that photo has a lot of free space and if that space is one color or very similar to one color then this is simply brilliant it makes our lives way way easier in this case it is so easy for me because 
the photo here is just on white background. So let me show you what happens when I add it. So I'll click on insert medium. It comes on my slide. I'll click on the, the follow, take a look at where the follow is. Let me just stop the guides. And then I will drag it to the left hand side of the slide, right? That's everything that I'm going to do. And if I deselect that photo, here is the whole space where I can put the text box, right? I haven't done anything else, anything else. By the way, a very quick lesson here on photos. If I see or hear something about you guys that you to took a photo from Picket and you stretched it in this way, or you stretched it in this way, I will be Don't do that. I will be mad at you. Okay, you are not spending forty <laughs> minutes with us at the moment to do a mistake like that. Never ever do this because. What I can say from personal experience is that we are currently still in 2019 seeing, especially from the banking sector, presentations that have children on the photos. There are children, but the children have long heads. Long. Oh, no. Because someone in a bank dragged a photo with the children this way. How can that even up until today, I still cannot understand how is that possible. Like, how can you not see that there is a problem? So I know. Yeah. Uh, to, can I jump in with two recommendations here? Sure. Uh, that's a very, very brilliant uh, advice. And thank you very much for that. Um, I, I want to tip you on a collection. We have a ticket called Space for Text, Br yep. which features exactly images like Boris just described with a lot of white space in the background where you can very easily put your text. Um, and another tip I can give you is that in Office 365, uh, PowerPoint has a thing called PowerPoint Designer that is basically foolproof. So if, when you insert a photo from Picket, PowerPoint Designer will give you suggestions. If you don't know what to do with the picture, use one of those. <laughs> Or you can listen to us today and get some more inspiration. Absolutely. So to move on here, uh, obviously I have added a text box here. I don't want to add a text box. I will just explain to you because I believe you guys know how to add a text box and type in text. This is basics. The reason what I want to show you in regards to the text is that it may sound, it may sound, it may, this design may look cool to you because of one very simple reason. The reason why it looks cool is because the font is not a standard font. This font, I would highly recommend this font to you. It's called Montserrat. Take a look. Montserrat. This font is completely free. You can get it. I'll type it in the chat quickly. Come. I can, you can get it from. Yeah. yeah. You can get it from any site with fonts and install it on your machine. Bear in mind, you have to be admin. You have to have administrative privileges to install a phone. Uh, however, this font is a really cool font that we really like. And please make sure that once you are designing a presentation, and once you are not a designer like me, please don't use many fonts in your presentation. Stick to one font. However, once you get the Montserrat font, for example, you will see that Montserrat has the so-called family. And the family, as you will see, is take a look. If I go to the Montserrat, you'll see that I have Montserrat Black, Montserrat Extra Bold, Extra Light, Light, Medium, Semi Bold. This is the so-called family. So use the family. Use two or three of the variations inside of the family, but don't use many. And please don't use other fonts, especially when you are not a designer. If you are a designer or if you are a bit more kind of advanced in this, in this area, please make please combine fonts. No worries. Of course, you can do some really cool things. But for now, let's stick it. Let's keep it to one font. So, just to give you the comparison, if the same text, if the same text was in Calibri, take a look. Same text, same sizes, same position, just different font. Which presentation will you be look, looking at? Which one would you choose? This one or this one? I believe the answer should be clear, right? Here I used Definitely. Montserrat and underneath, because my name is not a priority, I use the Montserrat light. Again, one font family, okay? 
So then from this slide, Beautiful. yeah, from this slide, I'm moving on to the next one. This is, well, nothing special, but let me show you how it was created because there is a catch here. So how do I create proper circles first? I will do the following. I will go to shapes. However, once I start drawing shapes, you will see that I can draw any shape, any circle, right? However, I don't want any circle. I want a proper circle. And the easiest way for me to do that is just to press and hold the shift key. If I do that, take a look at what happens. Clicking shift, look what happens. Removing, clicking again, removing, clicking again. And if I drag now, look how PowerPoint keeps the sizes the same and keeps the proportions proper and right. So the way you draw proper circles and proper shapes is by holding, pressing and holding the shift key while you're, while you're dragging. So this is how I'm creating my first shape. From here, I can say control D for duplicate, control D, another copy of the shape pops up. I'll move it to the right hand side. And then take a look at what happens if I click control D again boom so this is very very cool trick in order for you to make sure that everything is aligned perfectly and everything is in proper like in exact exactly the same um, positions compared to the previous circles right from here the only thing that i created and the only thing that i changed again obviously i'm not going to show you how to put uh, text boxes obviously the text boxes are, are aligned properly and are central, centralized um, to the circle. But what is interesting here is how I got those colors. Because if you look at the colors, you spot that these are the colors from those pencils here, right? So the question is, how can I take those colors? Let me show you something that's quite interesting. So I'll copy paste the image quickly. I'll put it somewhere here. I'll click on the shape. I'll go to the format. I'll say shape fill. I can change the color. But take a look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using a feature that was introduced in PowerPoint 2013, which is called eyedropper. When I click on eyedropper, take a look at what happens. If I go through each and every, when I hover over any object inside PowerPoint, it gets me the color. So if I go here on top and I hover on top of the uh, green, uh, on top of the blue pencil, I can just click on it and look what happens. And in the same way, I can go again. I can say, hey, eyedropper, give me the orange. I'll move the, move the photo. I'll click here. I'll say, hey, give me the green, eyedropper, green, and I have the colors. Of course, Microsoft by default puts outlines to those shapes. You see some blue outlines here. So I'll remove those by selecting them, clicking shape outline, no outline. And from here, I just type in, right? I put in one and then I bump the number crazy in crazy sizes. Don't be afraid to use big sizes. Don't be afraid. We are using Montserrat font. So let's change it to Montserrat. And there you have it, right? And the same thing I did for the other, uh, for the other circles. So let's not waste time on those. So here, the lessons are eyedropper, Control D to duplicate multiple objects and to keep the keep the alignment proper. And also make sure that you have proper shapes by pressing and holding the shift key, okay? So here, then we have an interesting case. As you remember, if I go here, I then have the number one zooming in. So how was this created? This was created in the following way. I duplicated the slide, take a look at the next slide. It's kind of strange when you look at it, right? Let me show you why. You see? So this thing is actually the same circle. Take a look at where the slide is. You see? So this is the same circle. It's just magnified. I just dragged it so much, right? And then because this circle, let me zoom back in, because this circle and this circle are actually the same circles, I went on the transitions and I used one of the new transitions in Office 365 or PowerPoint 2019, which is called Morph. This feature is a killer. It is a killer. So once I click Morph, 
Morph says, wait a minute, the circle on this slide is the same as the circle on the previous slide. However, on this slide, it's bigger. Find, find an animation for it. And Microsoft finds the proper animation or transitions, transition to be more, um, more correct here for us. We don't have to do anything else about it. We don't have to be art to be um, animators. We don't have to understand video. We don't have to do anything else. Just copy paste the object, make it bigger, move it, put it in another color or anything like this, but keep the object the same and then click morph and look what happens. Magic happens. So I don't want to explain anything else on this slide. As you can see, again, this is the circle. This is the same circle. It's just morphed. The problem with morph is that you have to have Office 365 or PowerPoint 2019 and some builds of PowerPoint 2016, but that's a completely different story. Now, then we have presentation design is different than PowerPoint. Here, what's important for me to say is that this slide, this slide is actually, let me show you the bad presentation. Close your eyes for a second. <laughs> this slide is actually this slide. What is presentation design? Presentation design is a sub area of graphic design, which focuses on making whatever, whatever, whatever. What I did here, it's so hard to recognize that this is actually the same presentation. I have to say it's like it's different. insane. Yeah. Different. So what I did here is when you guys remember when, when we as node designers are designing slides, you have to keep in mind something that's extremely important. You have to push for simplicity and you have to push for restraint. What I mean by saying simplicity and restraint is that I want you, once you have the slides ready or when you are building the slides, I want you to question. I want you to question every single element which you put on the slide and ask a very simple question. Is that element adding value to what I'm saying? Zero or one? Yes or no? If it's yes, let's, okay, keep it there. If it's no, then you have to remove it. Okay, so make sure that you simplify. Don't lose the message. Don't lose meaning, but try to simplify and then try to push as much as you can to remove a needed object. Here, nothing special. Text box, shape, uh, actually, yeah, shape, and then an icon that I found uh, in the Picket plugin. That's it, right? Nothing special, okay? And that's that. Now, from here, look what happens. Your friend PowerPoint morph, the transition morph will play again. Take a look at what happens from this slide to this slide. You see how the text box moves slightly? And this is again your friend Morph. How is this working? One of our yeah. users commented, Morph is love, Morph is life. Well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> we have, we, by the way, we have 55 stickers. Our, market, our marketing person is on the call. Uh, we have five, 55 stickers that we give away during events. And we don't have that one. Morph is life, morph is love. That Not a way is around. Cool. It, the morph is love, morph is life. If we are able to quote you on that one, that will be kind of cool. We'll build stickers with that statement. That sounds so cool. Christian, uh, let again, us know if it's okay to quote you on a sticker. Yeah, and yes, I love your stickers, guys. I have one of them on my computers. Uh, bullets, the, uh, the one bullets with bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Bullet, <laughs> bullets don't kill people. Uh, no, bullets don't guns. Kill. guns don't kill people. Guns don't bullets kill don't. people. Yes. Yeah. So here again, <laughs> this is, again, this is text box. However, this is the same text box as here. However, it was moved on the left hand side. And I say morph. And Microsoft says, wait a minute, this is the same text box. It just moved on the left hand side. Animate that. And it finds that animation for us, which is insane. It is insane. And here I said, hey, can I find, can I find, because my message here is that presentation design is applicable globally. And I said, how can I visualize globally? And I said, let me find on Picket something that's like a planet. And I, I found that image and it's in our library also, by the way, here it is. So this icon, and I added it here. However, take a closer look 
how I added it here, take a look at where the slide is, you see? So part of the photo is out of the slide itself, which is kind of a cool approach that you may have seen in some other presentations, documents, whatever. I don't think that you have to be a designer to know that. The cool part is that once you see it, and once you are not a designer and you see something like that, the next time when you are building a presentation, you can remember this trick and start using it. So the effect here is this one. So this is the end result, right? This is how the slide looks. Because it's white background and the image is also white background, it looks like it's part of the same image. Important note here, please make sure that the planet does not hit or the white background is not hitting the text because that's a problem. The de designers have something that they call, uh, designers have something they call white space or the so-called negative space. This is the space with between each element your elements the elements that you put on the slide have have to breathe that's how they call it leave them to breathe that's very important as you can see here right i can put i can put the text box here correct but they are not the presentation word is not breathing that's what negative space means so please make sure that you have you understand that then we have the same slide so i just copy pasted it <laughs> and then I did the same, guys. Take a look. So easy with morph. So the effect, whoop. Really, really fancy. And here, we have marketing person on the call, you have permission from Christian to use the quote. He mm -hmm. can't wait to pick up the sticker and add it to his collection. Really cool. Really cool. Uh, and <laughs> then we have something else. Here, there is a trick that I really want you to know because it will save you so many times. So the, the, our favorite presentation with the smart art, this one, set go and define the audience, go analog, jump into PowerPoint. The smart art became, became something that's now three separate slides, right? So I split those messages, each on a different slide. And for each slide, I found an image that in my mind, when I try to visualize engaged audience, I found an image that supports that message. So when you try to find an image for engaged audience and for that message, maybe you will find something else. Maybe you are going to be searching for something else. In my mind, that's how I visualize it. And I found a really cool picture on Picket for that, and then I used it. However, there is a trick here, and I want you to know it. Let me show you what's the trick. As we are getting to an orange part, you want your presentation to look consistent. If you carefully look at those pictures, not the original pictures, the question is, what was changed? Let me show you what was changed. So if I click on the picture itself, look what happens. You see? That's so, a very smart touch, right? So this is, as you may want to call it, this is a filter, right? That's a filter. Now the question is, how do you create that filter? And as you can imagine, once I created this filter, well, I copy pasted it a few times, right? And this way, once you are going through all of those orange slides, you see them consistent as they were in, by default, they were orangish, right? So how did I create this? Let me show you. So if I go to the insert and I go to shapes, this is a rectangle, right? I put a rectangle, look on the whole slide. I will remove the outline because I know that Microsoft created an outline. And now let me show you some magic. Again, write that down because you probably won't find it on the web. And oh, by the way, uh, Dimitri from our team will put a link in the chat, hopefully will put a link in the chat because there are some really interesting news that are coming up very soon from us. And if you want to hear, hear first for them and get some really exclusive things, Please click on that link and you will get into Facebook Messenger and then you will get the conversation going uh, and it's really cool stuff there. However, there is something that we are going to announce very, very soon. And if you guys care about presentations, please make sure that you go on that link on, in Facebook Messenger. Now, let me show you again, how did I create that? Because it's kind of cool. I'll go to the shape field. I'll go to eyedropper because I want it to be orangish, right? I take a look at how eyedropper works though. If I try to get the orange from this slide, it turns out that I can't, right? 
eyedropper doesn't work. I can't take it. Or can I? That's an interesting question. So let me show you how you actually can do that. So you take what eyedropper, you, you, you use it, and you click with eyedropper somewhere on the slide. Once you click, you press the mouse or the touch bar, you press, but don't release the mouse. Click and don't release the mouse and drag. Take a look at what happens. You see, boom. Now I can get any color from anywhere, even from outside of PowerPoint, which is a trick that How not that do many you people... find those tricks? How do you find that's them? A, that's our work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's our work. So Good job. I'll, I'll grab the orange. Boom. Here is the orange. And then the next step is right click. I'll go to the format shape. I'll go to the fill option. And then you find a very cool feature here of very cool property that's called transparency. And then let me show you what happens when I just start dragging. Whoop, 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 whoop. You see? And then there you have it. 85% in this case for me it looks okay. However, we have a problem because the text is still behind this filter. So I'll click on this one. I'll go to the home. I'll say arrange, send backward and take a look. Now I have the filter and now I copy paste it five on this slide, see, and on this slide. And now my whole orange section is orange. That's how you can save any photo from not being useful because sometimes you get a color, your brand is like, let's say pinkish, like the Pickett brand, and you find an image and you say, Ah, oh, gosh, this image is so cool. It's exactly what I wanted, but it doesn't have the pink nuance in it. Well, now you know how to make it look like this. And yeah, we're getting a lot then, of comments in the chat from users being amazed by that. Mark, I will not use paint anymore for fixing images. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eva whoever, is writing mind blown and Olivia is writing wow. So that was a really useful thing right there. That's a kind of cool trick. Again, here, look what happens. I have the, you remember the cool chart? Our research also shows that our industry does not still focus on it, whatever, <laughs> whatever. What this chart is actually saying is that 1% of our competitors spends time on presentation design, which is complete boot up, sorry, <laughs> which is nonsense. It's not right. That's why I said, hey, that's fake news. But this is how I create it. Again, think whether or not you need a chart at all. We have another speaker in our brand. You probably saw them, uh, which says, uh, which which thing in regards to whether or not a chart at all. Sometimes you don't need a chart. Why are why is everyone, especially in the banking, financial, auditing sector, pushing for charts? Sometimes you just need a number, and there is nothing wrong with it. So here you see that there is something very interesting. This orange thing, this orange circle is here. On the next slide, it repeats itself, which means that if this is big one here and this is slow, small one here, well, let's see what happens because your friend Morph is in the game again. So again, whoop, you see? Magic. <laughs> That's magic from, from, from Microsoft. I haven't done anything else but copy paste that circle and make it smaller. And this is the same circle, okay? Nothing else, that's it. As you can see, all across the presentation, I'm using Montserrat. Keep the fonts consistent. Keep the fonts consistent. Montserrat, Montserrat, Montserrat. Everywhere, it's Montserrat. So the source, Montserrat Light. You remember, my name on the first slide was also Montserrat Light. So let's use the same font again, right? Not another one. Keep them consistent. You don't have to be a designer to make that. So from here, I have a, the third part from the presentation, which is more or less the final part. The how, this trick, now you know. Okay, morph. And as you can see, all of those elements that I had in this presentation, which are 
go analog, jump into PowerPoint, set a go and define the audience, on and on and on. These are again three different slides. This is just one approach. I can make them in one slide if I want with some icons or images. In this case, I just define, decided to use three different slides because take a look. As you will see in those slides, the images are again half of them. And oh, by the way, filters, filters here again. This time green, why green? You guessed it right, because I want everything to look greenish. However, if you see that image, are you going to say that there is a green filter on top of it? I don't think so. Not really, no. And, and that's the magic of it, right? So I decided to have three slides that look like this, because remember the slide with the planet? It's the same, right? And the way I make sure is the same is by using guides. Let me show you what I mean when I say guides. Take a look at those three slides. It's extremely important. Have you guys seen the, the case where you open a presentation or a PDF that was exported from PowerPoint and you go slide by slide and you see the logo or the page number, or for example, the title moving a bit across the slides, like moving on the left, moving on the right, moving down, moving up, moving down, moving up. I'm sure you have seen it at least once. So how do you make sure that everything is properly aligned? You go to the view tab. And by the way, tell that to your friends, designers, because no, almost no designer out there that has to work with PowerPoint knows that there are guides in PowerPoint. And once they learn, they're kind of shocked. So go to the view tab and click on guides. Guides are those lines. You cannot as many guides as you, as you wish, just right click. Go to the grids and guides and add vertical, add horizontal, as many as you wish. The way I find out whether or not all my text is aligned is I drag a guide to the slide. Take a look, right? Here it is. I can see the line. My text is on top of the line. And then I move to the next slide. You see? The guide remains across all of the slides. So I can easily see whether or not the text here is on the same place. Better results? See? Perfect perfectly aligned and again i don't have i'm really sorry but i don't have to be a designer to make sure that that works i mean this is easy peasy especially when you have especially when you have guides and for everything is like this right for everything is like this you can align take a look start on the look take a look at the guide see so how do i make sure that the other text starts on the same place well here is the guide and here is the text it's on the same place if i click on the third one same the G in this font is kind of different, but that's a different story. See, guides, very, very simple. Look at the photos, the guide on the photos. See, boom, here, let me color it. If you right click on a guide, you can color it. So let me put it uh, red. If I go to the next picture, take a look. Take a look at the third one. Same place, nothing moves, nothing moves. And again, as you can imagine, whoop, sorry for that one. As you can imagine, filters, filters, very, very important filter so that you make sure the slides look consistent. And this slide is a copy pasted version of the previous slide is just that I have some other text on it. So guys, these are for this 30, 40 minutes. These are just some, these are just some of the PowerPoint tips and tricks that you can use and features inside of the tool that you can use to make presentations that differentiate. I really hope that you learned something new. My ask for you is, hey, you saw them. Now, the next time when you are in a, in a moment when you have to prepare and design slides, try them. Like take, take one of those tricks, try to apply it and see what happens. Because I promise you that what happens is that you will end up with way better presentation and may, there may be even people that will ask you, who did that? Like, who did that? Once you say them that it was you, it's a really cool moment. Thank you so very much for this walkthrough. Extremely, extremely helpful. And there were some things that I honestly didn't know. <laughs> really? So I learned a lot as well. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have some questions, Absolutely. maybe. Uh, so if you want to ask your questions, uh, you can pop into the questions tab and ask them right now. Let's go. Uh, let me see if we already have some questions available. Oh, I see the four by three question. That's a really cool question. I will stop the yes. screen sharing for now. 
So I can see the only the four by three, uh, which Christian is asking. Is there any any other or not? I see a question asking how important is the design of the slide and the presenting itself. Uh, well, let's answer this one quickly. So design is extremely important. However, if you think about it, we don't push any of our clients to have slides. You want slides when slides add value to what you are saying. If you really carefully think, think, think about it, for sure you will get to a point where you say, wait a minute, I was in this presentation some time ago and the speaker didn't have slides, but the presentation was quite, good, quite a good one, which shows you that not every single time slides are something that you need, right? That's, and that's normal. You don't have to push for slides. However, when you have them, then they have to be on the top level. And the reason why they have to be on the top level is because people nowadays all across the world has at least once in their life seen good slides. Once you see good slides, you cannot unsee it, right? And every single time you guys compare. And because you can compare, it's becoming dangerous. And you say, that's not the way it should look. How important it is? The other, end, the, the other part of the question is that every successful presentation has three components. Story, what you say. Design, if you have, the, if you have slides at all. And delivery, how you say it, right? So all of those three have to play in perfect, in just in perfect sync. If one of them breaks, everything breaks. Just, just to give you context, imagine the, this situation. You have the best things to say. You are one of the greatest speakers on the planet, but then your slides have 40 bullet points per slide. Are you going to listen? I know the answer, and you know the answer. You are going to disconnect at some point. The same is with any other combo. Yes. Great slides, great things to say, but the person does not have eye contact, or something is constantly failing, or he is he's constantly saying, uh, mm, um, so the delivery is failing. What are you going to do? You're going to disconnect. So story design delivery. If you have slides, they have to be on the top level. Thank you for that. Uh, another question we have is, as you said, the four by three question. Could you tell us some instances in which four by three could be That's useful? a very interesting question. Thank you for that one, because it's a very interesting question. And I really, let me, let me give you context on that one. Four by three is a really cool format. However, we have to start from, we have to first understand that when we are presenting with all of you here in the chat, I see 25 people or so, um, when we're presenting live in front of a live audience, like in this case, when we have slide, when we have a webinar or a conference or internal meeting, we have to prepare slides. Slides are by default something that's extremely simple and extremely visual. You have to see a slide, you see it for two or three seconds, boom, it's so quick and then you return your attention to the speaker. That's how effective slides should work, work. That's how they should also look. They have to be extremely simple, boom, three seconds, and you return the attention back to the speaker. When, because I'm sure that someone in the past asked you, hey, can you save us your slides after the presentation? If you have this case, you now know that you have to send them, but if you carefully think about it, you don't have to send the slides because if your slides were right and designed properly, they're not going to work. They're so simple that if I don't have you in front of me, I'm not going to be able to understand what those slides are saying. That's why in our industry, in the presentation industry, you have something that's called slide doc, which is a mix between a document. It's not that detailed as a document, but it's also not as simple as slides. It is a mix. It is created in PowerPoint, Prezi, Google Slide, a Google. It has a big mix though. It has to be self-sufficient. If I open it and you don't have, and I don't have you as the speaker, I have to be able to understand it completely. And this is a completely different format. In that place, you may want to use four by three. For slide docs, you may want to use four by three because the, four, the square-ish type of format reminds people of books, which is kind of cool. Now, when L, what are the other case when you have to use four by three? When you know that you are getting in a room where the projector, the multimedia is just old. 
To give you context, you can ask the organizer, you can check it for yourself, but be extremely careful with two very interesting places. Every single time when you're going to, first, a university or a school, and second, if you are going to a hotel, bear in mind that the technology inside those places is most often outdated. So if you are going to be presenting in one of those places, based on our experience with, again, clients from every industry that you can imagine, I think you have to be careful and not use 15 by now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Coco is saying that she missed the core part due to an overlap. Don't worry, you're going to get a recording after uh, the call is over. Uh, filters is one thing to check. Morph is another. What else? She's asking for a quick recap. The third thing that you mentioned, I think, was the guides. Was that? Sorry. And following that. Uh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, uh, I didn't got the question. Let me scroll. Did you ask a question? Can you give an answer again? Oh, no, we... No, they... I haven't asked the question. I'm about to ask okay. the question. And the question about guides uh, was, can we give name to a guide, no. like how we gave no. color? You can just color them, yeah. but you cannot give them names. I understand. And... Uh, very uh, nice comment from Lily saying that we've been super helpful, asking when the next webinar is. Uh, I see that uh, you guys from uh, 356 Labs already answered, but I would recommend to follow both uh, 356 yeah. Labs and Tickets yeah. uh, Facebook pages, where we, <laughs> where we will always announce our upcoming webinars. Um, and thank you, Matthias, for uh, saying that we are rock stars. Million thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sharing the knowledge. All right. Any final questions before we wrap up for today? See that someone is typing, so I'm going to wait a little bit. Yep. <laughs> you guys rock. Thanks for sharing the knowledge. Our pleasure. Uh, I have been. The network connection is kind oh, of cool. for you guys and to learn so much new stuff. Yeah. Super, super cool. <laughs> I have a little surprise for you that stayed until the end and are also going to stay until the end of the recording. Uh, we at Ticket are ready to offer you 30% discount on our business product. So if you're interested in testing that, uh, that's the adding you saw during the webinar that Boris was using. Uh, you can hit me up on an email at js at ticket.com. Uh, you will get an email um, That's announcing cool. that after the webinar as well. That's kind of cool. All right. Well, thank you everyone for bearing with us, and I hope we were helpful today. Thank, yeah, thank you, you for, for inviting me so again. Your knowledge. And we're looking forward to <laughs> that. It has been our pleasure, and we're looking forward to welcoming you guys Absolutely. again on our next for webinar sure. together. Bye, right. everyone. Have a nice day, everyone, and goodbye. Questions? Okay. By the way, I really have to leave. <laughs> so let's let's chat tomorrow. Uh, let's chat tomorrow. And yeah. yeah, let's chat tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone.